Here's part seven of We Spread by Ian Reed. Jack came in her room early that morning for a in-house spa day, but he seemed really tired, like emotionally drained, like he's had a long night. He didn't say much, but he came in with the fresh folded towels and he's like, Penny, it's time for your spa day. I'm going to be washing your hair, cutting it, styling it. Uh, I'll do your nails too. Penny's never had this before. She's never been that type of lady to get all this stuff done. And she's like, oh, oh, okay. So they went to the bathroom and they began. She's had her hair completely did. Her nails were cut and cleaned. And Jack was kind of chatting with her like, I, I, you should do more art. I really want to see more of your art. And Penny's like, oh, <laughs> um, I don't really like people looking at my art. It's it's a bit shocking to most. I guess Penny's art style was kind of body horror type surrealist stuff. Love it. And Jack's just like, you should have someone sit as a model just to get like body reference down and then you can do whatever you want. And she's like, you know what? I thought about it, but you know, I'm just kind of getting back into it. Weirdly enough, last night, I think I got up in the middle of the night and like painted I've never done that before. I I don't even know where I put the canvas. They continued to chat for a bit, and Jack is like, you know, Penny, this is kind of weird to say, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but you really remind me of my own mother, and I miss her. And Penny didn't say much. She just kind of smiled, and she's like, oh, thank you. And she closed her eyes. She leaned back, and she thought of her own childhood with her mother. It was quiet for a moment, and when she opened her eyes again, Shelly was standing over her. Jack was gone. Shelly took over for Jack, even though Penny looked at Shelly confused, like, where did Jack go? Oh, he's around here somewhere. I just love your hair. Her touch was firm and kind of aggressive. Penny wanted Jack back. There was something really unsettling and off about Shelly today. Her attitude was sharp and kind of passive aggressive like the fake nice like there was some weird motive behind it you know penny i just love your art your style is so amazing i saw the painting you did last night what how did you i don't like secrets you know this place is small enough and there's there's enough of us here where none of us should be keeping secrets. But I saw your painting and I think it's gorgeous. You should keep doing that. Penny was pissed. This was a breach of her privacy. Art was so personal to her, especially she has to let people see her stuff. If she felt comfortable enough with people, she would allow them to look at her art, which I totally get. But by Shelley seeing the piece before she finished it, and how did she see the piece if she hid the canvas? Were there hidden cameras? But Penny put it in the back of her mind, and she just turned to Shelley, and she asked her a little, like, personal questions. Like, oh, how did the mansion get into your ownership? Like, who owned it before you? And I heard about your schooling. That's really cool. And with a raise of an eyebrow, Shelley became annoyed. Jack wasn't supposed to tell her any of this. Hmm. How did you uh find out about my schooling? Uh, uh I asked qu questions. Hmm. Yes, uh, the six seaters did become uh, my ownership. That's what I turned this mansion into. It is my life's work. Um, I went to college for or organic chemistry. And then Shelley went on a very excited ramble about nature and symbiosis. The symbiosis in nature. The lichen that grows on the tree. It is a moss and a fungi. Is it one organism or is it many? She went on and on and on and on. Imagine if we were all linked together like that. Wouldn't that be fascinating? We would all be so protected if we were... Penny thought to herself, why didn't Jack just finish her hair? Where did Shelly come from? And why is she replacing Jack? Did she not want us talking? But Shelly, how did you end up here in this house? How did you end up here? This house was my grandparents. It was theirs. This house was used as a summer vacation point. 
I inherited it when they died, but I, I just loved it. Unfortunately, I was the only one in this house. I wanted to share this experience with other people who I felt deserved the help. When I was alone mostly in this house growing up, I always wished that there were other people around. So, I, uh, I want to slow down time so people can be around longer, so we can spend more time together. Hearing this, Penny felt fear, imagining day in, day out, being here forever, eating, sleeping, painting, being around the same four individuals day in and day out, every single day. That sounds awful. That sounds like hell. And she's like, how do I tell her that that is an awful idea? But Shelly, what if time was all you had? What if it all ended up feeling meaningless after a while? Too much of one thing could be bad for another. No, Penny, you're wrong for that. Don't ever say that again, please. There is nothing wrong with feeling dependence and asking for help. I hope you know that. When the conversation was odd and cryptic and it just kept getting more uncomfortable and weird, Shelly began cutting Penny's hair without asking her what style she wanted it. She just kept cutting it shorter and shorter and shorter into a bob. Penny hated it, but she said nothing. I just love that you're talking with Hilbert. He's sweet, isn't he? He's a mathematician. He's very smart. He's a very nice man. You've got a little bit of a crush on Hilbert, don't you? Mm. I don't really see the need for that. Dating in my old age? Ew. Gross. She thought to herself, like, I never dated when I was younger. I mean, I met my life partner, and we were together forever. But no marriage, no kids, none of that. And I can't imagine, like, flirting and dating when I'm old. Yeah, maybe she liked Hilbert, maybe they flirted a little bit, but I can't see it going any further than just pleasantries. Penny tried to brush it off, but Shelly kept pushing the narrative. 